So a few weeks ago we did a video on Sawyer's Killer Bug, and I'm not going to repeat all of that, but a couple of the comments made me want to go back and pull Frank Sawyer's book, and I found a couple of interesting things in there. Um, first of all, about where he describes how he ties the killer bug. This book was first published in 1958 and then republished in 1970. And so this is pretty much all black and white, but there is sort of a drawing of what the killer bug looks like. And as you can see, I described it as sort of a, a hand-rolled cigar with sort of a, a taper, slight taper to it, but not much of a taper. Sawyer makes a point of Chadwick's yarn. And he says in here that the manufacturer is Chadwick's and they list the colors being 477. Actually, it's a natural and not very easy to obtain. That would have been in 48. He says, the color of this bug changes completely when it is wet. And I feel sure it is this that causes the attraction for so many kinds of fish. Though I have constructed these bugs with many other colors of wool, none have been so effective. So, just a few things from Sawyer's book. And I did want to retry, retie this, just in case you're interested, really, in what seems to be the way Sawyer describes it. It seems that he starts the wire at the bend of the hook and works toward the eye of the hook. And he doesn't mention any sort of, of tie down. So I've been playing with this a little bit and I think you're going to have to, he says to make two, two uh, or to double the wire on the hook shank. And if you're going to do that and wind up with the wire at the back, then you're going to have to start at the back. So the way he would tie it, uh, according to the book, the way you would tie it would be in this way, starting the wire at the back, working to the front, bringing the wire back to the back. Of course, if we had a book today, it would have all nice progress pictures. And then you leave the wire hanging at the back, and I guess you would cut it off or break it off or whatever, like I'm going to do. Although he doesn't say that in the instructions. Then the second part of this, he talks about three layers of the yarn, but ending at the back. So if we're going to do three layers or three passes of yarn and end at the back, we're going to have to start the yarn in the front. So in contrast to what I did the other day, if we wanted to start this in the front, we would have to do a jam knot the yarn itself, which is really, I mean, with this particular yarn, it's pretty easy to do because it's fairly thin. You can see the shape, that cigar shape, kind of forms pretty naturally doing it this way. And then he says to get it and to tie that off four turns or so. He doesn't say anything about a half hitch or anything like that. He says to clip the yarn off. That's the best I can figure out from Sawyer's book of how he would tie the killer bug. I thought before we finished with the Sawyer killer bug that I would uh, take care of a couple of other things. The first one is we got some more of the Chadwick's 477 uh, in from Semperfly. On the previous video, we tied some with Jameson, Shetland Spindrift, some of the vineyard, and then this is the piece of supposedly the original Chadwick's that I got, and this is Chadwick's 477. When you compare these side by side, you'll notice that um, a couple of them, the Spindrift and the Vineyard, are a little bit more brown or brown and uh, red, brownish red, light brown, than the, than the original Chadwick's. And when you compare the, uh, the Semperfly to those, you'll notice the Semperfly is notably dark. The point that I made in the first video was that it's wet that makes a difference. And uh, Sawyer comments in his book that when it's wet, the color changes to something that, that looks very natural. And so I thought that um, we would tie some of this with the Chadwick's. And then we'll do another with the uh, Semperfly Chadwicks, and then we'll do another wet-dry comparison. And this time, somebody had asked if they could see these dry, and this time I'll make sure that we version of the dry flies as well. So I'm going to tie this real quick, tie it the same way that uh, Sawyer describes in his book. 
that he ties. Tying this with the Semperfly material in the same way that Sawyer describes in the book, that is, two passes, start at the back, two passes of copper wire, and then start at the front with three passes of um, yarn and tie off at the back. This is a lot thicker than the original Chadwick's, and so if you're going to tie this way and you want that shape um, to you get from Sawyer's, uh, from the Chadwick's, you're going to have to split this, or you're going to have to use just two passes, something of that nature. All right, so I'm primarily concerned here with what happens to the color of these when they get wet. And so what I'm going to do here is I have a white dish that I'm going to place them in. And you'll see this one's a little fat. So that's the Semperfly. These two that I'm going to put beside one another are the two that I tied with the Chadwicks. This is the Shetland Spindrift, and this at the bottom is the Vineyard. And so you'll notice that this is really three passes with that yarn from uh, Semperfly really makes this thing too fat. I would much rather make two passes and have it look more like these, but we're going to take a photo of this. So if you're looking at the color of the yarn, my thought is that just on pure color match, the best shade in terms of dark or light is probably the Semperfly. The best coloration, I think, is the Shetland Spindrift. And, you know, the vineyard is okay. It's probably the last we'll do with the Sawyer's Killer Bug. I think we've done enough with it. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for all our videos and tight lines.